Hello and welcome to the Bonsai Garden. It's now late spring and all the trees are now well flushed out in leaf. And this is also a spectacular time for Japanese maples, which is showing some great colours. Japanese maples are a popular and highly prized species of tree in the world of bonsai. These trees are known for their delicate and ornate leaves, stunning colours and graceful shapes, which make them an ideal choice for bonsai enthusiasts. In this video, we will explore the cultivation of Japanese maples and their various varieties. The Japanese maple, or Asa palmatum, is a species of tree native to Japan, Korea and China. These trees are characterised by their delicate palmate leaves and their small, round shape which makes them ideal for bonsai cultivation. There are over a thousand different cultivars of Japanese maples, each with their own unique characteristics. When cultivating Japanese maples as bonsai, it's important to provide them with the proper care and attention. These trees thrive in well-draining soil and prefer slightly acidic conditions. They also require regular pruning and shaping to maintain their desired shape and size. Additionally, Japanese maples benefit from regular fertilisation and watering, as they can be sensitive to changes in soil moisture and nutrient levels. With their delicate and ornate leaves, stunning colours and graceful shapes, these trees are an ideal choice for bonsai enthusiasts. By selecting the right variety and providing them with the proper care and attention, Japanese maples can be cultivated into stunning and unique bonsai designs that are sure to impress and inspire. Palmate and cutleaf Japanese maples are two varieties of Japanese maple trees grown for their unique foliage and attractive shapes. Both of these varieties have distinctive leaf shapes and are highly valued for their ornamental value in landscaping and gardening. Here I discuss the characteristics of palmate and cutleaf Japanese maples and their differences. Palmate Japanese maples, also known as Acer palmatum, are a deciduous tree that is native to Japan, Korea and China. They are a small tree that grows up to 20 feet tall and 20 feet wide with a round shape. The leaves of the palmate Japanese maple are lobed and resemble a human hand with fingers spread out, hence the name palmate. They can have three to seven lobes, with each lobe having a serrated edge. The leaves are typically green in colour, but some cultivars have red or purple leaves. Palmate Japanese maples prefer partial shade to full sun and grow well in well-drained soil. Cutleaf Japanese maples, also known as Asa palmatum dissectum, are a variety of Japanese maple tree that has finely divided leaves, giving it a lacy or feathery appearance. The tree is smaller than the palmate Japanese maple, reaching a height of 10 to 15 feet with a spread of up to 20 feet. The leaves of the cutleaf Japanese maple are deeply cut and dissected, giving them a fern-like appearance. They can be green, red or purple in colour, with some cultivars having variegated leaves. The cutleaf Japanese maples prefer partial shade to sun and require well-drained soil. The primary difference between palmate and cutleaf Japanese maples is their leaf shape. Palmate Japanese maples have lobed leaves that resemble a human hand, while the cutleaf Japanese maple have finely divided leaves that give them a lacy or feathery appearance. Additionally, cutleaf Japanese maples are generally smaller in size than palmate Japanese maples. Both palmate and cutleaf Japanese maples have similar growing requirements. As understory trees, they prefer partial shade to full sun and well-drained soil. They require regular watering to keep the soil moist, but not waterlogged. It's important to note that Japanese maples are susceptible to leaf scorch in hot, dry weather, so they should be watered regularly during dry spells. Maples can also be separated into upright and weeping growing varieties. Most typically, the cutleaf or lace leaf dissectum maples will be weeping trees and the palmate trees will be upright growing. Japanese maples are known for their stunning seasonal colour changes. The colour changes in leaves are due to the presence or absence of pigments called chlorophyll carotenoids and anthocyanins. Chlorophyll is the dominant pigment in green leaves and is essential for photosynthesis, the process by which plants use sunlight to convert carbon dioxide and water into energy. Chlorophyll absorbs most wavelengths of light except for green, 
which has reflected and gives the leaves their characteristic green colour. As the days become shorter and temperatures cooler in fall, production of chlorophyll in leaves slows down and eventually stops. As a result, the green colour fades and other pigments become more visible. Carotenoids, which are yellow and orange pigments, are always present in leaves but are usually masked by chlorophyll. As chlorophyll production declines, the carotenoids become more visible, giving the leaves a yellow or orange colour. Anthocyanins, which are red and purple pigments, are produced in response to certain environmental factors, such as cooler temperatures and exposure to sunlight. They are not present in leaves throughout the year, but are produced as chlorophyll breaks down. Production of anthocyanins can vary depending on the species and variety of the plant, as well as weather conditions. So when maple leaves change from red to green, or green to red, it's due to the changing balance of pigments in the leaves, as chlorophyll production declines and other pigments become more visible. It's important to note that not all Japanese maples will exhibit the same colour changes, as the timing and intensity of the colours can vary depending on the specific variety and the growing conditions. However, in general, Japanese maples are known for their stunning seasonal colour changes, making them a popular choice for landscaping, gardening and, of course, bonsai. Japanese maples are readily available in most garden centres, some DIY stores and even some supermarkets, and they're fairly inexpensive. When buying them from garden centres, just be careful to watch for trees with nasty grafts on them. These can be difficult to grow out. Of course, when buying a Japanese maple tree from a dedicated bonsai nursery, you'll pay a premium for the care and attention which has been lavished on the tree up to that point. Growing Japanese maples from seeds can be a rewarding experience, but it requires patience and careful attention to the plant's needs. Here are some steps to follow. Collect the seeds. Japanese maple seeds are found inside a winged fruit called a Samara. They are usually ripe in the fall, at the end of October or early December. Look for healthy ripe Samaras on the tree and collect them by hand. And store the seeds in a cool dry place until you are ready to plant them. The seeds have a hard outer casing and need a period of stratification before they will germinate. This means that the seeds need to experience freezing and thawing which will crack the outer casing and wake the seed. Some people do this by placing the seeds into the freezer, but I much prefer to plant them and put them outside to experience this naturally through the winter months. Prepare the soil. Japanese maples prefer well-draining soil that is rich in organic matter. Mix together equal parts of peat moss, perlite and sand to create a soil mixture that will provide the ideal growing conditions for your seeds. Plant the seeds. Fill a seed tray with soil mixture and moisten it with water. Plant the seeds shallowly and cover with a thin layer of soil. Water the tray gently, being careful not to disturb the seeds. Provide the right environment. Japanese maple seeds need a cool, sheltered environment to germinate. Check the soil regularly to ensure that it stays moist but not waterlogged. Transplant the seedlings. In spring, the seeds will sprout and form a pair of cotyledons, proto leaves, shortly followed by their first true leaves, which will look more like typical maple leaves. After the seeds have germinated and the seedlings have grown to a couple of inches tall, they can be carefully transplanted into individual pots, filled with the same soil mixture. Keep the soil moist and provide seedlings with a bright, indirect sunlight. Growing Japanese maples from seeds is a rewarding experience that requires patience and careful attention to the plant's needs. By following these steps you can be successful in growing your own Japanese maple trees from seed. One of the challenges of growing Japanese maples is that they do not grow true to seed. Instead, they are usually propagated by grafting onto different rootstocks. Here we explore the reasons why Japanese maples do not grow true to seed and the benefits of grafting. The main reason why Japanese maples do not grow true to seed is their genetic makeup. Japanese maples are highly variable with a wide range of foliage colours and shapes. This variability is due to their complex genetic makeup which includes many different genes that control leaf shape, size and colour. 
When two different cultivars of Japanese maples are cross-pollinated, their offspring will inherit a mix of genes from both parents, resulting in a wide range of leaf shapes and colours. This variability makes it difficult to produce new cultivars of Japanese maples that are consistent in their appearance and characteristics. Another factor that contributes to the variability of Japanese maple seedlings is their tendency to hybridise with other species of maple. Japanese maples can cross-pollinate with other species of maples that are native to their range, resulting offspring that are a mix of both species. This can result in seedlings that do not have the desirable traits of the parent cultivar, making it difficult to produce consistent offspring from seed. Grafting, on the other hand, is a reliable method for producing new cultivars of Japanese maples that are consistent in their appearance and characteristics. Grafting involves attaching a cutting or scion from a desirable cultivar onto the rootstock of a different species of maple. The resulting tree will have the desired traits of the scion, such as leaf shape and colour, whilst all the benefits from the vigorous root system of the rootstock. One of the benefits of grafting Japanese maples is that this allows growers to produce new cultivars that are true to the parent plant. By grafting a cutting from a desirable cultivar onto a different rootstock, growers can produce a large number of identical trees that are consistent in their appearance and characteristic. This is important for the nursery trade where customers expect consistent and reliable plants. However, this does mean that for many varieties bought from nurseries, they may come with what can be an unsightly grafting scar. Japanese maples are beautiful and popular ornamental trees, but they are susceptible to various diseases and pests. Here are some of the most common diseases and pests that can affect Japanese maples, and how to manage them. Verticillium wilt. This is a fungal disease that can cause wilting, yellowing and browning leaves. It can also cause branch dieback and eventual death of the tree. The fungus can persist in soil for many years, so prevention is the best strategy. Avoid planting Japanese maples in soil where other susceptible plants have grown, and make sure the soil is well drained. Fungicides are not usually effective against this disease. Avoid overwatering your bonsais, as they will be more prevalent to this disease. Aphids. These are small insects that can suck the sap from the leaves and cause distortion and curling of the leaves. They can be managed by removing them with a strong spray of water, or applying an insecticidal soap or surfactant. Aphids breathe through their bottoms and the surfactant effectively suffocates them. Vine weevils. The adult vine weevil feeds on the leaves of plants causing notched edges and holes. However, the most damaging stage of the vine weevil is the larval stage, where they feed on the roots of plants, causing significant damage and sometimes death. Vine weevils are difficult to control, and the best approach is often prevention. This can be done by avoiding bringing infested plants into the garden, regularly inspecting plants for signs of infestation, and using biological controls such as nematodes, Chemical controls are also available, but should be used with caution and following instructions carefully. They are less of a problem in less organic soil mixers. Scale insects. These insects look like little shields on the bark of the trunk. They attach themselves to the bark and cause yellowing and stunted growth. They can be managed by removing them with a cotton swab dipped in alcohol or applying horticultural oils. It's important to monitor Japanese maples for signs of diseases and pests and take appropriate action to manage them. Good cultural practices such as proper watering and fertilisation can also help keep the tree healthy and better able to resist pests and diseases. Now just before I show you my Japanese maples I need for you to hit the like button to share the love. And if you want to know more about how I grow my bonsai trees then subscribe to be notified of future videos.
This first tree is a Shurisawanum aureum, and you can see that it has quite a large, flat, round leaf. In spring, it comes out with this really vivid green, lime green color leaf, which in autumn, it tends to take on an almost golden bronze color before falling. What's quite interesting about this particular garden tree is that it's grown on a different rootstock that almost looks like a little princess. And what that means is that we get suckers developing at the bottom of the tree with a different type of leaf on them. And we have to remove those quite frequently. This next tree is a Shurisawanum Jordan, which is very similar to the Aureum, except that it has more of a yellowy colored leaf. The tree is more of an upright growing tree and is more tolerant to sun than the Aureum. But in many respects, it's really quite similar. And you can see a comparison of the leaves here. This next tree is a firecracker Japanese maple and you can see that that is a cut leaf or lace leaf Japanese maple. The leaves are really quite dark in colour and remain so through the year. I do get areas which are slightly lighter which gives it its name. The tree just here is a emerald lace Japanese maple and these cut leaf varieties of Japanese maples tend to be less common in bonsai cultivation. They tend to have a weeping growing habit. The tree here is an orange dream and it's one of a number of orange dream trees that I have around the garden. They tend to have this sort of reddy orange tinge to the leaves and that becomes more obvious when grown in sunlight and through the growing season which gives them their orange dream name. They're a little similar to Katsura, though Katsura has a, a more yellowy, buttery green leaf colour. I've got several Atropurpurea trees around the garden. What's interesting is that I believe that a number of different varieties or hybrids are generally lumped under the label of Atropurpurea. And you can see that certainly amongst the trees that I've got in the garden, there are different forms and shape in the leaf. I have some which are more palmate and broader leaves. But I also have some which have almost a starfish look about them. And these were all labelled and sold under the Atropurpurea label. I've got here a, a Trompenberg, which is a dark red maple and I think perhaps some of the varieties of Atropurpurea are probably more likely or closer to the Trompenburg variety. The leaves of the trident maple are small and three-lobed making them ideal for creating a dense canopy of foliage in a bonsai design. The bark of the tree is also visually appealing with a greyish brown colour that develops interesting texture and fissures as the tree ages. This tree is a Katsura Japanese maple and this particular one is a garden tree and you can see that as the leaves open out in early spring they have a green almost sort of buttery yellow colour with a hint of red on the tips of the leaves. As they catch more sun they take on a more orangey colour and this this example here is a tree which I bought from the local DIY store b and which I grew in a basket for two years to improve the nabari on that and I've planted it now into a shallow bonsai dish and this year the foliage came out a very orange colour in early spring and probably more orange than I've seen it previously and in that respect it's very similar in colour to an orange dream tree. The shojo is a maple which is highly prized for bonsai due to its absolutely gorgeous spring colour. And you can see here it comes out an almost luminous pink in spring. That turns to more of a muddy green through summer before turning red again in autumn. And you can see here a comparison of leaf size with Atropurpurea. I have two de shojo trees in my collection.
in the corner here I've got a little princess and that's a tree which has really quite small leaves which are green with a hint of red around the edges and the tips of the leaves and it's really quite a pretty little tree and because the leaves are generally quite small it does make it suited to bonsai. I've got a Benny Mako tree here which in colour and also in leaf form is very similar to the Shurjur. I think perhaps the centre of the leaves has a, a darker vein running through than the, the Shurjur. And the comparison of the leaves here. This is my Japanese maple butterfly grove. This was actually put together from inexpensive trees from a local supermarket. And what's notable about this is that the leaf is variegated, but also the leaves are all very irregular. There are sort of hook shapes on the lobes of these leaves. And the leaves are all quite small, which makes for a pleasing bonsai tree. Uh, there's a hint of pink on those in spring. And as we go into autumn, that turns to more of a striking magenta colour. This large tree in the tea garden area is a Siriu. And it's quite an upright growing tree. And this one is really quite vigorous. It's almost doubled in size in about four years. And again, you can see it's got a very delicate filigree leaf. I've seen examples of this which have a hint of red along the edges of the leaves and look fancier than this particular variety that I have here. But I've never really seen that coloration on the leaves of this one. It tends to be this sort of lime pale green colour throughout the year and doesn't really change colour. This is an Irene. And that's a yellow leaf variety of Japanese maple. Um, a little bit like the, um, the butterfly maple I've got. It has a slightly irregular leaf, so some of the lobes on there have a more hooked shape. And I've got a couple of these growing in the garden, which I'm growing and cultivating to turn into bonsai. The tree here is a mountain maple and that really is the name that's given when the variety of the Japanese maple isn't really known and that might typically be a tree that's grown from seed because trees grown from seed never really grow true to the parent tree. There are a number of reasons for that which I've explained earlier in this video including cross-pollination and hybridization from different parent plants. This tree is Garnet. As you can see, it's a low-growing, weeping, dark red dissector maple. By the pond here, I've got an Natum tree, which you can see is another lace leaf tree. It's got a very dark colored red leaf and as we move into autumn that takes on a really spectacular golden orange color it's really something to behold going green is another variety of maple that's often found in garden centers and even local supermarkets fairly inexpensively it has quite small leaves which makes it suitable for bonsai, but I find it to be quite a slow growing tree. In the ground here I've got a Baihu Japanese maple. What's notable about that is that in autumn and winter in particular when the tree isn't in leaf, 
the bark is a really vivid yellow colour. The leaves on that tend to be a sort of lime green colour. If you want to learn more about Japanese maples, there are some great resources out there. And here are two of my favourites. The first is this book, An Illustrated Guide to Japanese Maples for Planting and Patio Pots by Neil Kenny of Larchfield Trees. It's quite a slim book, but it covers Japanese maples, their different varieties, their cultivation uh, and care in quite some detail. And it's definitely a, a worthwhile book for reading. It's quite an inexpensive book, which is available on Amazon has some great pictures of different types of Japanese maple and it's a worthwhile addition to your collection if you're interested in finding out more about Japanese maples and it's more of a general book. The second book is considered something of an encyclopedia on Japanese maple varieties and cultivars and it's Japanese Maples The Complete Guide to Selection and Cultivation by J.D. Vertries and Peter Gregory. And it covers, as it says, over 600 different varieties and cultivars of Japanese maples. And if you're interested in learning about the different varieties of Japanese maples, this is certainly the book. And it has a, a couple of paragraphs on each of the different varieties and some absolutely stunning photographs. And if you're not aware of the different varieties, then you're probably going to be quite shocked to, to read this book. It's just an enormous array of different types of leaf, of colour. Uh, this book covers very much less the cultivation techniques and as I say is more of an encyclopedia of the different varieties of Japanese maples. It's a little bit more expensive but it's also a book that's available quite readily on Amazon. I hope you found that useful or interesting. If so, then please hit the like button and subscribe for future videos. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Thank you.